we've learned about the multivariate normal model and extensions as the multivariate T um, with a factor of square root of W um, with a stochastic representation essentially, right? This is what Paul stressed. You have to look at stochastic representations to extend, extend your model. Then sampling is easy and so on. And a, a different way of getting to a more, even more general class of models than the normal variance mixtures you, you had with the square root of W um, is, uh, is to get to elliptical distributions. Why do we want to study this even more general class? Because um, in chapter eight, I believe we will have a result that for all x, for all random vectors x following a multivariate elliptical distribution, value at risk is sub-additive. Yeah, so that builds a link between chapter six and chapter two, essentially. And so that's why we are interested in this even more general class of, of distributions. Now, the way this class is constructed is slightly differently than going from the multivariate normal to the multivariate T. And it's easy to it's easier, let's say, and also essentially the classical way to introduce elliptical distributions to first study a subclass of elliptical distributions. And that subclass are spherical distributions. And the names will become, will become clear soon. So what is a spherical distributed? And again, we look at random vectors. We don't look at, at densities here. Yeah? So a spherically distributed random vector, why? is a random vector that is in distribution equal to um, a rotated or, or reflected version of itself. Yeah, so it's essentially invariant distributionally under um, rotations and reflections. Now, uh, you can go home, you didn't learn anything. How do you like, use, how do you think of such a random vector? Why? What is it? How would I, how would I simulate it? Yeah, so that's not given in this definition, unfortunately. Yeah? But you can already think about the geometry in the sense that, ah, it must be, like, uh, how, how would the points look like if I sample it? They have to be invariant if I rotate them and, uh, yeah, or even reflect them. So maybe something like a circle would do, right? Yeah, that's where the name comes from, the sphere, essentially, then in higher dimensions. Yeah? But two dimensions, the, the circle. Now, there's a very important theorem, and of course, it's, it's uh, proven in the, in the book. Um, about the characterization of spherical distributed random vectors or spherical distributions. And it says the following are equivalent. So first, my vector y is following a spherical distribution. If and only if, there is a function called the characteristic generator with which I can write the characteristic function like that. And essentially, you see the characteristic function, a bit of the same considerations as before with the density, the characteristic function is constant on, on spheres, on circles. Huh? Now, the characteristic function didn't play a too big role so far, huh? and it won't. Huh? Um, we rather look at stochastic representations at the random vectors. But if you want to prove the properties we will later quickly discuss about elliptical distributions, then there's no way around, the, uh, around characteristic functions typically. They also typically give you the shortest, the shortest proofs for, for properties and, and results. So this is what, what, we, what we will not encounter too much anymore. But the third part, so essentially reading why is spherical if and only if, this result holds, this is very important. Because this tells me, aha, uh -huh, y is spherical if and only if every linear combination is in distribution equal to some constant, being the length of the vector, times one of the components of y. And the only thing to take away here at the moment is the mathematical or probabilistic beauty of this result. Namely, that I can rewrite something that involves a multivariate random vector, something high dimensional, this in distribution by something that's univariate, by a single random variable. And that's extremely helpful that's for, for many purposes. Um, also, especially in, in chapter eight then, where we learn that for all elliptical distributions, value at risk is sub-additive. And the proof is actually, it's not too complicated, and the proof is exactly based on that result. Yeah? So it's extremely beautiful probabilistic result, essentially playing back the multivariate case to something univariate in distribution. Yeah? 
So very, very helpful result. But still, um, all linear combinations being in distribution equal to one of them, still it's kind of a recursive definition if you like. I still don't know how to sample from that. I still don't know how to think about spherical distributions. Yeah? I would like to have something like Paul represented, a stochastic representation. Yeah? So this is very important, two words, stochastic representation. Yeah? I want a representation in distribution of my more complicated high dimensional random vector in terms of simpler components, components I can simulate, independent normals and transformations with the Koleski or, and so on, yeah? so simpler components. And here is the result. So it says that a random vector y is spherically distributed if and only if it's in distribution equal to r times s, where r is a positive random variable, similar to the square root of w before, and s is a random vector, so similar to your set before, but this is now distributed uniformly on the unit sphere. Yeah? And there are ways to generate points uniformly on the unit sphere. That's not, not, it's not very complicated. You can use uh, your set vector from before. You will see that in, in a minute. But this is a very nice way of thinking about spherical distribution. So I essentially take points uniformly on the sphere, and then for each of them, I take, I, I build a line between the origin and that point, and I scale that out randomly by the dis, by realizations of R, of that distribution of R. And uh, yeah, so that's that spherical distribution um, in the in the bivariate case is of course a circle. How could you immediately generate uni points uniformly on the circle? Just take a random angle between zero and two pi and take the corresponding point where you are. Yeah? So that would be that would be um, an easy way to generate points uniformly on the unit circle in the bivariate case. And then you take, let's say, an exponential distribution, and you simulate as many points as you have on the circle, and then you scale them out, and, and you will have a spherically distributed... Um, Is it easy to do on more dimensions? Yes, of course, it's easy. There's an easier way to sample from the, the sphere in higher dimensions, and we will do that now in, the, in a second. <laughs> Yes, yes, you have to. It's, it, is, it, it is a very good question um, to show that the method works. I would take characteristic functions, which we don't do. But yeah, you will see that it works. I, I will show you um, these plots in R. Now, here you see I started exactly with, well, in the, I can only plot in the bivariate case, so I started with points uniformly on the unit circle. And then I took as the radial part um, F distributed random variables, I multiply with D, I take the square root, and so I scale each point out or, or further in, depending on my realizations of R. Now, why did I take such a complicated distribution function here? Because that's exactly um, the distribution function of the radial part that gives me a sample of a special case of the multivariate T distribution. Now, these, these spherical distributions, they can reproduce special cases of the multivariate T distribution you've seen before, and that's such a case. The spherical distributions are no generalization yet of what Paul did. It's not so easy to build a link between the two. But we will look at the generalized version of the spherical distributions, the elliptical distributions, and they will be a generalization of the normal variance mixtures Paul talked about. Yes? in the beginning without mathematical background on the little omega which is there. So it's very important this picture that we sort of resample Mario City. So we sample these 500 points but every sample is an omega. Yes, so a, yes. You sample the first point, then I sample the R and I multiply them. So the first point may be pulled towards the center. Then you sample the second point on your circle and you sample your second R. Independently of each other. That's, that's important, independent. It's not important, it's not important. That's where a bit of the omega thinking may come in. So it's important that you see, it's not that you solve everything and then an R and then how do you keep this? Point by point you do this. Of course, if you take the very same R, what you would get is simply one bigger that's circle it. or one smaller circle, right? I do these exercises with you in R soon, so. Here, you yeah. mean the D? Yeah, yeah that's just a multiplication. Multiply. This is a bit of uh, abuse of notation here, of course. This is a distribution, so I sample from that. And then that sample, I multiply with D and I take the square root. It's, it's all in R. It's all there. Give me a second, we are there. 
Um, now, in R, I actually, um, well, we come back to these pictures, I slightly take a different direction. So you see one set of constructing a sample from a multivariate elliptical distributions on the slides, and then one version you have on R. Because it's, I can first multiply with the radial part, um, and then do later on the Koleski decomposition, I can do it the, the, the other way around. So there are, there are two versions. Yeah? Good, so we go from the circle to this spherical to these spherical shapes. But of course, the point is, when do you see such a data? Yeah? Paul showed you the BMW Siemens data before. You never see uh, uh, circles as level curves in your data. Yeah? So this is just for us a building block for doing the next step, going to a more flexible model. And that more flexible model are the elliptical distribution, multivariate elliptical distributions. Now, if you know the spherical distributions and if you study characteristic functions to derive a lot of nice properties about, uh, about spherical distributions, uh, things like the, the covariance of the uniform distribution on the unit sphere and all of these things, then you can all use them as a building block to understand elliptical distributions and properties of elliptical distributions. Because to go from the spherical to the elliptical world, how do I go from the circle to the ellipse? Well, I do exactly that linear, that affine linear transformation. Yeah? So that's a very simple step then. All I do is I take an A, which is the Koleski factor of some covariance matrix. I also want to stress that some covariance matrix, not necessarily the one of X, yeah? because the radial part plays a role as well. Yeah, so I take this Koleski factor, I multiply it with my spherical random vector, and then of course there can be a move where I shift my whole random vector, a location parameter where I can shift my whole random vector somewhere else. Yeah, and the language is very important here. I always stress when I teach that, I always stress the difference between a mean vector and a covariance matrix versus a location and the scale. We speak here in terms of a location and the sigma would then be a scale matrix, yeah? but those are not necessarily the mean of x and the covariance of x. Now, if the mean of x exists, then it's indeed equal, but it doesn't have to exist. Yeah? It depends on the radial part. And if the correlation matrix of x exists, then it's equal to the correlation matrix corresponding to that covariance matrix. But the covariance matrix of um, the covariance matrix of X itself, again, if it exists, depends on the sigma plus, well, not plus, but multiplied with a factor, and that factor essentially contains the information that, uh, essentially, uh, of the radial part as well. Yeah? So the radial part has to come in at some point. And you saw the same before when Paul talked about the square root of W and the co covariance matrix of the normal variance mixtures. There you have the, um, the square root of W in the covariance matrix as well. You saw it for the multivariate T. There you have the nu divided by nu minus two. Yeah? That's essentially that factor you also see here. Yeah? So very careful with, with um, mean and covariance here. Good, now, now I should prove to you that what we do now is indeed a generalization of what Paul did earlier with the normal variance mixtures. And so first of all, I can take my stochastic representation of Y being R times S in here and get a nice stochastic representation of an elliptical random vector. This is extremely nice for us, right? So X is just mu plus R times A times S. Yeah? So this is my stochastic representation. And to show that the normal variance mixtures are a special case of the ellipticals, all I have to do is I take the stochastic representation Paul gives me and I try to rewrite it such that I get it in this form because then I'm done, then I know this class of distributions is a subclass of the ellipticals. And the way to do it is, here you have your normal variance mixture, stochastic representation. You just pull out the norm of set, and then this will be your new random, positive random variable, so that's your radial part. And set divided by the norm of set can be shown, first of all, to be uniformly distributed under unit sphere. Yes, that answers your question, Frank. This is exactly how you would generate from a uniform distribution on the unit sphere. And one, surprisingly, but I don't want to go in detail here, one can also show that R and S are independent, so this is really exactly the stochastic representation of an elliptical. So all normal variance mixtures are indeed um, special cases of elliptical distributions. Very beautiful results here. 
And so now I, let me go back for a second to that slide. So we did the first step. We started with S. We went to the spherical distributions multiplied with the radial part such that we in the end hopefully get a T. This is already a special case of the T. And then I do the location scale transform. So my scale is now the Koleski factor. So you see how it turns from, from, from uh, a spherical shape I, um, into an, an ellipsoid, yeah, the sample cloud. And then I move that to the upper right corner with a mu, with the location parameter. Yeah, so, and this looks now much closer to, well, this is actually a multivariate T sample now. Yeah? Just constructed through the idea of, of spherical.